Okay, good morning. We are going to get ready to start something this week in our class called Number Talks. What is it that you think that we talk about when we do a number talk? Any ideas? Jayla, what do you think? Numbers. Numbers! That's what a number talk is. Now, what are some other times of the day that we talk about numbers? Are there any other times of the day that you talk about numbers, Landon? Math. During math. <laughs> Definitely when we're talking about math. Do you ever talk about numbers at any other time? Yes. What do you think? Any other times of the day that we talk about numbers besides the math? I hope lots and lots of places. Joseph Nicholas. Oh, sometimes when we have math homework. Sometimes when you math have math homework, so you continue talking about numbers at home, Mary. Um, if you have to share candy with your brother, you might have to divide it into numbers. Right. You might actually have some things that happen at home that remind you of numbers. There's lots and lots of different times of the day that we talk about numbers, but we're going to start this. You guys can put your hands down. We're going to start this new time called Number Talks, which is a special time where we literally set a timer for 15 minutes. And for 15 minutes, we talk about numbers. We talk about how to solve problems, and then we're done. And when our time's up, our time's up. We, but it's a good way for us to learn how other people solve problems. Not all of us solve problems the same way. And I might not know how Rhiannon solves the problem unless I ask her and have her tell me. And you might not know how I solve the problem unless you ask me and I tell you. So this is a time where we're on purpose going to talk about all the different ways that we solve problems. And what we'll find out is that sometimes other people have strategies that would be useful for us. Now, just real quickly, we need to talk about some of the rules of the number talk. One of the things is you have to be on your bottom. And... We need to, um, second of all, we need to be really respectful of other people's ideas. I don't solve problems the way everyone does. You might solve it a different way. But when someone rate, um, talks to us and tells us how they solve the problem, we need to be respectful and listening because they might have a strategy that might help you in the future. There's also one other rule. It's the most important rule. Are you ready? You are absolutely under no circumstances ever, ever, ever allowed to raise your hand. No. Some of you Christians are like, what? Yes. We're not allowed to raise our hand? That's yes. crazy. Do you think that we just call out our answers however we want? No, we don't call out our answers. We Instead, we use a silent secret signal. Instead of you raising your hand when you know the answer, you're going to put your hand right here on your chest. Everybody show me. And when you know the answer, you're going to put a thumb up. That's kind of like raising your hand, but it's right here in front of your chest. We do it right in front of your chest because sometimes... When somebody next to you is raising their hand and waving their hand, what are you thinking about? You're thinking about them. You're like, how did they figure out the answer so fast? I'm just looking at the problem, and they've got this answer, and you're thinking about them and not the math problem. We want everyone's mind during this time to be thinking about the math. So we're going to do our secret silent signal right here. When you know the answer, show me what it looks like when you know the answer. And then show me what you think it looks like when you don't know the answer. You're doing this, but doesn't really mean you don't know the answer. It really means I don't know the answer yet. What's the difference between I don't know the answer and I don't know the answer yet? Faith? That you're still trying to figure it out. You're still trying to figure it out. No one is allowed during a number talk to stop thinking. Even if you're not sure what to do, you should constantly be trying to think of a way to solve it, and everyone is trying to, to get it started, okay? So show me what our secret silent signal is. Excellent. I'm going to start, and what will happen is I'll put our problems up here um, on the board, and I'll write, we'll write down some of the strategies that we use, okay? You ready? I want you to do me a favor. Get your hand right here so I know if you get, you'll be ready. When you know the answer, put your thumb up. What's the answer, Tyler's? But 7 plus 3. Ten, how did you figure that out? This is what makes the number talk hard is sometimes we have to think not just about what the answer is, but how we figured it out. Tyler, do you know how you figured out seven plus three? How? Because seven plus two is nine. He said seven plus two is equal to nine. And 9 plus 1 is equal to 10. Tyler, where did this 2 and this 1 come from? Which number? I see your, you had your 7. Where did your 2 and your 1 come from? Did 
look up here, Tyler, you were doing 7 plus 3, and you said, oh, I know 7 plus 2 is 9, and I still need to add one more. Why did I need to add one more? To get 10. To get 10, but how did you know that you needed to add one more? Why not two more or three more? Okay, it wouldn't equal the right number. What if I didn't know that the answer was supposed to be 10? Let's take a look. Let's see if Ty, someone else can help put words to Tyler's strategy. How did we? How does he know I can add two and then one more? And that's the same as seven plus three. How do we know that that's the same? How do we know that that's the same? Because seven plus three equals ten, and you can count on from seven to three. You can count on. Okay, so you've actually given us another strategy that we could do seven and count on three. So we'd have seven, and what would come after that? Eight, nine, ten, and we'd be counting on three. So that's one strategy we could use counting on. But Tyler didn't use counting on. He said, I knew seven plus two is nine, and one more makes ten. Where did this two and one come from? Does anyone think they know where that two and that one came from? Aiden, what do you think? Um, because two plus one equals three. Oh, because inside this three, what two numbers are there? Two. Two and one. Can we say in a problem, can we think, oh, well, instead of thinking of that as a three, I'm going to break it up into a two and a one. Are we allowed to do that in math? Yes. yes, we can take those numbers inside that number, and we can break them apart into other numbers. So Tyler knew that I could, I might not know seven plus three, but I know seven plus two, and if I've used two of those, if we think of that three as two and one, I can use two of them, and then I can add on one. Did anyone solve it a different way or know it a different way? And solve it or know it a different way. Christina, what did you do to solve 7 plus 3? I knew that 7 plus 5 was... I knew that 7 plus 5 was... was I knew 7 plus 3 was... Like, I knew that 7 plus 4 was 11 and... Okay, so you knew 7 plus 4 was 11. Maybe we didn't know 7 plus 3, but we knew 7 plus 4 was 11. But she can't just use, what's the, what's the difference between 3 and 4? How, why can't we just say, oh, well, 7 plus 4 is 11, so 7 plus 3 must be 11, right? Why can't, what would we have to do with this 3 and this 4? What did Christina do? Take away um, 1 from 11. And take away 1 from the 11 because that was 1 too many. She used another fact. So let's take a look back at our strategies real quickly. We have two situations where people used another fact. Tyler, I'm going to write your name right up here, Tyler, so I remember what happened. Tyler used a fact he knew. He knew 7 plus 2. He used that fact to solve. Christina, Christina, are you okay, Christina? Let's see. Okay. Christina used a known fact to help her. And then, who was it that gave me this counting on? Connor. Connor, Connor used counting on as a strategy. Oh, O-R. And O-R, excuse me. So, now we know 7 plus 3 is 10, right? What's 7 plus 3? 10. 10. Okay, now I'm going to draw a little line and we're going to go on to our next problem. When you know the answer, give me the secret and silent signal. <coughs> What's 7 plus 5 plus 3? 15. 15. How did you figure that out? Because I knew 7 plus 5, I knew 7 plus 4 was 11, so I just added one more and then 3 more. Okay, so you knew 7 plus 4 was 11, and then you added one more. Why did you add one more? Because 4 plus 1 equals 12. Okay, so, so 4 plus 1, that gives us what number that's up here? The 5. So she broke the 5 apart into four and one, she added four, and then she added the one more. And then what'd you do next, Karis? I added three. And then she added on the three, and 12 plus three is 15. So she broke apart those numbers. I'm gonna teach you a fancy word. You know, we did it up here. Tyler did it up here when he broke the three apart into two and one. 
And then Karis did it down here when she broke the five apart into four and one. Do you know what it's called? Any ideas about what it's called when we break those numbers apart? Nicholas? Decompose. Oh, decomposing numbers. Excellent. So we can decompose these numbers that we take, break them down into their other pieces. And who else has a strategy for how you solve seven plus five plus three? Did anyone do it a different way? Mary, what did you do? Um, I do seven plus five was... Okay, so you did 7 plus 5 was 12. How did you know that 7 plus 5 was 12? Uh, if I counted 5 out, it would equal 12. So you used counting on to get from 7 to 12? Okay, so she did 7 and counted on 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Did her little jumps, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then, how would you get from 12 with your 3 more? What did you do there? Um, I knew 12 plus 3 was, would be 15. 12 plus 3 would be 15. Did anyone solve it a different way? Did anyone use something different? Aiden, what did you do? I didn't make a 10. You didn't make a 10? What's make a 10 mean? Um, it means that the first number that you use, if you have, if you have two numbers, mm -hmm. you, can all, you can take some away to the other number. If, it, if it's like 8 plus... Let's work with this one right here. Explain to me how you use make a 10 with 7 plus 5 plus 3. Because I knew 7 plus 3 was 10, so I took away 3 from 5, and um, I added 3 plus 2, and I got 15. Okay, so you broke this 5 apart into 3 and 2. So he saw the 5, and he's going to decompose it into 3 and 2. And then he knew 7 and 3 was 10, and then you added on the 2. two. That was left from that five, and then what'd you do next? Added the two and, and three. then he added the other three. Let me ask you a question. Did anyone see a ten there that might have been faster or a more efficient? We'll talk a little bit about the word efficient this week as well. Who might have seen things a different way? Aiden, what did you see? Seven plus three. Oh, there's a seven and a three. If you see those seven and three, even though they're right not right next to each other, can you go ahead and add them together? Yes, remember you talked about in math that you can add numbers in any order you want. And we want to be adding them in a way that's going to be most efficient for us. 7 and 3 is 10, and then what's left? What number? 5. Well, if I've got 10 and 5, what's 10 and 5? 15. 15. Okay, real quickly because we're running out of time. I've already kind of gone over our limit in time. Let's take a look right here. 3 plus 6 plus 7. When you think you know it, show your secret signal. Three plus six plus seven. Brianna, what's three plus six plus seven? Sixteen. How'd you figure that out? Um, I added um, seven plus six, and then I added two more. Okay, how'd you solve seven plus six? Um, I bumped seven and counted on six. Okay, so she held seven and counted on six, so she did seven, <coughs> counted on to six more places, and what is seven plus six? Thirteen, and then what'd you do? I added three more. And then you did thirteen plus three was sixteen. Thank you, Brianna. Did anyone solve it a different way? Anyone solve it a different way? Brandon, what did you do? Um, you can subtract. What do you mean you can subtract? Um, you change the numbers around from seven plus minus six equals three. Okay, is seven minus six three? If I have seven items and I take away six, am I going to end up with three? No, remember, we're adding these together, so we want to make sure that we're getting our sum. We're putting them together. We're not going to subtract any in this set. Who solved it a different way? Michael, what did you do? I added 7 plus 3. Why did you add 7 and 3? Because um, they make the number 10. They make the number 10. And one of the things that we'll find a lot in math is 10 is a great number. In fact, our whole number system is based on the number 10. Why would it be helpful to have a 10 there? Michael, why did you choose to go ahead and make the 10? Because um, when you make the 10, you 
You have one more number and you just add it to the 10. That's right. If you make the 10, then you just have to do 10 plus 6. What's 10 plus 6, everyone? 16. 16. 16. Do you even have, really have to think about that? Mm -hmm. No. Adding 10 to a number is really easy. So if, whenever I can, in a problem, find a 10, then it's much easier. What's easier, adding 10 and 6 or having to figure out what 6 plus 7 is and then add on 3? No, 10 and 6. Finding that 10 made it easier. So as we look back over here, we saw up here if we found the 10 first, there are 7 and 5 easy numbers so that we can just see and add like that? No, but if I had 10 and 5, is that an easy addition problem? Yes. yes. Did anyone solve it a different way? Jayla, what did you do? How did you figure out 9 plus 7? Okay, so she when she did 6 plus 3 was 9, and she's going to add on 9, and sometimes 9s can be difficult to add, but Jayla says, well, 9 is just 1 less than 10. So what if instead of this being 9 plus 7, it was 10 plus 7? What would the answer be? 17. 17. But it's not the full 10, it's 1 less. What's 1 less than 17? 16. So let's take a look back at what we've done today, some of the strategies we've used. We use decomposing numbers, and I'm just going to slide over here, and these are going to be our addition strategies list. And we're going to add to these over the next couple days and weeks of some things that we've done. So we, some of the strategies we use, we use counting on. What were other strategies we used? Make so, a 10. Make a 10. Make a 10. Regrouping. Did we use make regrouping today? No. In the problems that we did, did we have to use regrouping? We maybe could have if we were writing these down or maybe if they were stacked on top of each other, we might go to that strategy. But not many of us used regrouping today. We either used counting on or make a 10. Any other strategies? What else did we use? Nicholas? Decomposing. Decomposing numbers. Numbers. Any others? We'll go take a look over the next few days and we'll see what other strategies we did. You guys did a great job today. Thank you very much. I want you to um, I want you to sit back, crisscross, have sauce. Um, where you are? Turn off this junk.